So I welcome you all to this session of uh, intracranial hemorrhage. <clears throat> this is a very important topic from uh, exam point of view. So without wasting the time, let us start with the session. If you like this video and others video, do subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get immediate updates. So whenever there is trauma to head, uh, epidural hemorrhage or epidural hematoma can happen and to happen the epidural hematoma there has to be a very severe trauma so a severe trauma which is able to do skull fracture is usually uh, capable to cause epidural hematoma and what is the site which is affected it is usually the middle meningeal artery which is getting ruptured or lacerated due to that trauma so basically epidural hematoma is arterial now if you see that blood which collects uh, above the dura mater, that's why it is known as epidural. Uh, so between uh, the dura layer and the skull, the blood gets collected and it rapidly expands. So that's why it is known as uh, epidural hematoma. And this happens uh, across the dural att attachments. Now, intracranial hemorrhage can also happen if a uh, person is hypertensive. So it is always good to know what is the status of blood pressure in the patients. But in case of epidural hematoma, it is mainly associated with trauma. The blood pressure is usually normal at the onset. Now, <clears throat> so the presentation that will happen is usually acute presentation, more than chronic. And person will have a lucid phase. And after that, there will be rapid deterioration uh, in the central nervous system function, uh, which may lead to coma and death if not treated. <coughs> now how to diagnose this so the investigation of choice is uh, non contrast ct scan which we have done and if you see <coughs> the hemorrhage will be seen as hyperdense area and if i do mark it the area appears <coughs> hyperdense and if you can see the shape it is usually the biconvex or what we know as lens shape now Over the time, uh, or it is a chronic one, then instead of hyperdense, you may see the hypodense. But chronic presentation is not that much common. It is usually presented as acute presentation and it will appear as a hyperdense area on non contrast CT scan. You can also do MRI so other investigation which can be done is MRI if you do CSF uh, 
uh, examination with help of lumbar puncture it is usually clear there will be no blood in uh, CSF in case of epidural hematoma but it is a medical emergency because it is a rapidly expanding hematoma so treatment is uh, emergency uh, or rapid surgical evacuation so first uh, surgically you remove the hematoma and then you repair this uh, tear in the artery so cauterization or ligation of the blood vessel has to be done now clot size and midline shift because it will uh, this will push all the structures of brain towards midline so this midline shift would determine the need for whether surgical evacuation is needed or not now comatose patient need intracranial pressure monitoring um, uh, anticoagulant should be avoided in these cases obviously so that's all with epidural hematoma now in part two of this series we will discuss about subdural hematoma